love my tadpoles. Wait, I just learned about pressure. I bet I can figure out the pressure caused by the water pushing down on the bottom of my tadpole tank. You, you can, but first you need to measure the dimensions of the rectangular box of water in the tadpole tank. <laughs> Great, I have my meter stick right here. <laughs> the rectangular box of water in the tadpole tank is 50.2 centimeters long, 25.4 centimeters wide, and 18.5 centimeters deep. That means the area of the bottom is 50.2 centimeters times 25.4 centimeters, or 1,275 square centimeters. And we multiply that by 1 squared meter squared over 100 squared centimeter squared to give us that the area of the bottom of the tank is 0.1275 square meters. And we multiply the height or depth of the water by one meter over 100 centimeters to get 0 0.185 meters. Uh, but how do we solve for the pressure at the bottom of the tank caused by the weight of the water pushing down on the bottom of the tank? Well, we know pressure equals force over area. So the pressure at the bottom of the tank caused by the water must equal the force of gravity acting on the water over the area of the bottom of the tank. And force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity, but we do not know the mass of the water. But we do know the density of the water at room temperature equals 998 kilograms per meter cubed, but how does that help us? We know density equals mass divided by volume. We can rearrange that to get mass equals density times volume. And the volume of the rectangular box of water in the tadpole tank equals the area of the bottom times the height of the water. And we can substitute that back into the equation for the force of gravity to get force of gravity equals the density of the water times the area of the bottom of the tank times the depth of the water times the acceleration due to gravity. And we can substitute that back into the pressure equation. The area of the bottom of the tank cancels out and we get that the pressure at the bottom of the tank caused by the water in the tank equals the density of the water times the acceleration due to gravity times the depth of the water with numbers. That is 998 times 9.81 times 0 0.185 or 1,793 pascals. Uh, and we can multiply that by one kilopascal over 1,000 pascals to get roughly 1.79 kilopascals with three sig figs. You know, you keep talking about tadpoles. Uh, what? Uh, uh, who are you? That's Mrs. Cape, my AP biology teacher. How does that work? Yeah. Uh, it's my dream. Right. Thanks, Billy. All this talk about fluids and tadpoles, but did you know that amphibians actually have three different strategies for respiration during their lifetime? As tadpoles, they can exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide directly with the water across the large surface area of their gills. But after they go through metamorphosis and become adult frogs, they'll exchange gases with the atmosphere with lungs and respire through their skin. That's why amphibians are such great ecological indicators. Because if oxygen can diffuse through their skin, then unfortunately, other less awesome chemicals that are polluting the environment can too. But all this talk of respiration reminds me, Billy, don't forget, we have a quiz on cellular respiration next week. Oh, cool. Thanks, Mrs. K. You're welcome, Billy. Oh, wait a second. The pressure caused by the fluid in the tank equals density times gravitational field times depth. Yeah. In other words, the, the pressure caused by the fluid on the bottom of the tank only depends on rho, the density of the fluid, little g, the gravitational field of the planet, and h, the depth of the fluid. The pressure does not depend on the area of the fluid at all. That's cool. Jinx, yo me a soda. In other words, the deeper you dive into water, the larger the pressure from the water. Yep. As you dive deeper into the water, there is more and more water above you, pushing down on you, causing more and more pressure on your body. And a wider tank of water will have the exact same pressure at the same depth.
you can feel that pressure in your ears. Wait a second. I, I am in a really deep fluid right now. What do you mean? All this air around me is a fluid. And the air is pushing down on me right now. And it goes up and up for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Oh. That is called atmospheric pressure, and it has a standardized value of roughly 101,000 pascals. In other words, 1.0 atms, or atmospheres of pressure, equals 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. That is the pressure referred to in standard temperature and pressure, or STP. Standard pressure is one atm, and standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 273.15 kelvins. So when you fly high in an airplane, the amount of air above you is less than when you are on the surface of the Earth. That means the pressure from the air decreases as you go up. That is what you feel in your ears as your ears repressurize to the lower pressure. That is fun. The decrease in pressure caused by less atmosphere above you as you go higher in an airplane, which causes your ears to pop, is fun? Yeah. Wait a second. The atmosphere is pushing down on the tank of water. That means the total pressure at the bottom of the tank is actually the sum of the atmosphere pressure and the pressure caused by the water. Correct, Billy. The pressure caused by a vertical column of fluid is called gauge pressure, and it equals the density of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity on the planet times the vertical height of the column of fluid. And the total pressure is called the absolute pressure. Absolute pressure equals atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure. That means the absolute pressure at the bottom of the tadpole tank is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals plus 1,793 pascals or 102,793 pascals or roughly 103 kilopascals with three sig figs. Nice. nice! In my dream, we learned about pressure caused by fluid. I'm in Billy's dream. A few quick additions. What we have been talking about here is called fluid pressure. The pressure from the water and the air on objects is fluid pressure. And the particles in fluids are constantly moving around, colliding with one another, and colliding with the surfaces bordering the fluid. The pressure exerted by a fluid is caused by the particles in the fluid colliding with the surfaces next to the fluid. And often liquids are considered to be incompressible. The volumes and densities of incompressible liquids do not change regardless of the pressure applied to them. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you.